This is the 2023 Lenovo IdeaPad 3i Chromebook, 15.6 inch, a bit of a mouthful. In this video, I'll take you through all you need to know about this model, including the pitfalls to avoid if you're looking to buy one. You may have seen in September when I posted to X after purchasing this as a grade A refurb that I paid just £108, that's about $132. US It came without the original box as expected, but it did have the original charger. The Chromebook itself was in like new condition with zero battery size. Cycles. The only issue I did find, which I've encountered on brand new Chromebooks in the past too, was that the trackpad was a little loose feeling. That really bugged me, so I opened it up to adjust it and improve it. I don't recommend you do this unless you accept the risk and voiding your warranty. As you'd expect at this price point, it's an all-plastic build, but it feels solid enough. Lenovo have stuck to the design language seen with the 11.6-inch Flex 3i that you may have checked out on the channel. Here they are against each other to help show some of that. You've still got that partially textured lid again, which I quite like both from a design point of view and from a practical point of view to give a little bit more grip. Whilst we're on the build, it's worth noting that the screen can go back almost 180 degrees flat, but not quite. The overall build quality does feel better to me than that of the equivalent offering from Asus, the CX1500. As you may have seen in my review, I wasn't the biggest fan of the build quality there. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a full comparison video between those two. This Lenovo weighs in at 1.79 kg, about 3.96 pounds. That's about what I'd expect from a budget Chromebook of this size. It's just a little more than the Asus that I just showed you. Even with the odd bit of light gaming, such as Real Racing 3, general performance is no issue, as you can see here. I've got the Intel Pentium Silver N6000 processor and 4GB of RAM in this model. There are some model versions of this Chromebook with the Celeron N4500 processor, and there's also variations with the RAM between 4GB and 8GB. Similar on the storage, I've got 128 gig on this one, but there are others with 64 gig, and there's one model variation that has just 32 gig, so do avoid that one. Whether you have the N4500 or N6000 processor, you'll be running 64-bit Chrome OS, and thanks to the recent AUE date extensions, you'll have Chrome OS updates until June 2031. The trackpad is pretty decent for an entry-level Chromebook. It's a large size, has a good click feel to it when pressed, and it responds well to gestures. The keyboard is a plus point of this Chromebook. Being a larger device, you get the benefit of the number pad as well. The keys have a medium travel to them and feel nicely responsive to type on. I'm pretty happy with this one. I'm also pleased that Lenovo have put the speakers on the keyboard deck too, firing sound upward at the top of the keyboard deck rather than, say, being on the bottom of the Chromebook. They get loud enough and the sound quality isn't bad. Here's the usual test track. Connectivity is pretty standard on this Lenovo with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.1. Physical connectivity is covered over on the left hand side with the Chromebook's only USB-C port for power data and display out, which I'll test in just a minute. A full size USB 3.2 Gen 1 port, a headset jack and a micro SD card slot. And then over on the right, you've got a second full-size USB-A port, an HDMI v1.4 port, and a Kensington Nano security slot. Personally, I think it's a shame there's not dual USB-C so you can connect on either side of the machine, but you get the physical HDMI port and that may be more valuable to some people. The HDMI port worked just fine, of course, and I also tested display out over the USB-C port with a new hub I'm testing here from Tobin One. You can see here it happily ran my two full HD monitors, running extended displays at a resolution of 1920 by 1080, so full HD. You could also have the Chromebook as a third screen itself. Network and all other peripherals were also running just fine. Do subscribe if you want to get notified when I post a full review of that hub. The display on this Lenovo is where the compromise comes. It's full HD, which is great, but this particular one is TN rather than IPS. So it does look a bit washed out and viewing angles are not so great. Lenovo state the brightness as 220 nits. Viewing the Lenovo spec site for this model, you can see there are options of this Chromebook with an IPS screen, and some of those are even touch screens too. Here's an example of an IPS screen next to it to give you an idea. In this case, it's the Asus Spin 314 that I reviewed recently. Like any laptop or Chromebook purchase, just be careful to check the exact spec. 
The webcam is at the top of the screen, set in the cheapy feeling plastic bezels. And whilst it's a basic 720p webcam that just gets the job done, it's good to see that Lenovo included a privacy shutter, which you don't always get on a more budget Chromebook. Battery life has been fair. My usual test of getting into a second day of light use before feeling the need to charge has been passed. And if you are considering this Lenovo IdeaPad 3i Chromebook, definitely check out my review of the Asus CX15 Chromebook to see how that compares. You'll find that in this next video, or alternatively, here's another video you may like to check out that the YouTube algorithm thinks you're going to like.